Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to video, we're going to be discussing and analysing further NVIDIA Turing slash RTX GeForce rumours that have popped up over the past 24 or so hours. Let's face it, SIGGRAPH 2018 was very interesting because NVIDIA finally let us know what their Turing architecture was capable of. Indeed, the company claims that it is the biggest change and biggest advancement in graphics for over 10 years, which, by the way, was the date that we saw the Tesla series of graphics cards launch from the companies. These were the 8800 GTXs and so on, which were the GPUs which uh, introduced the unified graphics architectures that we know and love today. These, of course, allow graphics cards to not just run textures and geometry, but also do various compute commands and so on. But uh, in yesterday's video, we did do a rather in-depth analysis of the Turing architecture. So you can go ahead and either read the article, which is linked in the video description, or you can check out the video, which is also linked in the video description. But today we want to cover some specifications, pricing leaks, and other uh, bits and pieces that have emerged uh, since. Now, these leaks have emerged from both Beidou and Tech Power Up, and the leaks are rather comprehensive. And they speak to not only the release of the RTX 2080, but also a Titan class product as well as the RTX 2080 Ti. And what's rather interesting about this, of course, is that there are various lists that have emerged which actually have a Ti and Titan class product. The website videocards.com actually posted a list, and it would appear that this was from an AIB. And you can see various device IDs and they are prefaced with direct, only, or virtual. Direct means a reference design. That, of course, means NVIDIA's Founders Edition, but virtual represents just the PCB. So this would obviously be used for custom variants of the cards from the AIBs themselves. The RTX 2080 will indeed be snipped from 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM down to just eight gigabytes. This is clearly a cost-saving measure on the behalf of NVIDIA. I have to admit, I am very curious to see how this memory uh, of just 8 gigabytes will affect games of, let's say, the next 12 months, especially ray tracing. Basically, what I want to know is how expensive, in terms of VRAM, is these various graphics techniques. And I would be very curious what would happen if, let's say, you're trying to run two of these cards in SLI, or whatever it ends up being called for the next generation of cards, how is that going to how is that going to affect anything? Or even if you're running at say a more modest resolution or 1440p with a single card, let's say you have eight gigabytes of RAM on the RTX 2080. Let's say that you've got six gigabytes being used with no ray tracing. Is it going to go to like 6.2 gigabytes, seven gigabytes? <clears throat> of course, no one really knows because no one outside the company yet know how much VRAM. Uh, these specific graphics techniques are going to take. I imagine these graphics techniques probably won't put you over the 8 gigabyte limit. After all, it would be pointless otherwise to just have 8 gigabytes of RAM. But it's certainly something that we want to test here at RGT when we start seeing uh, ray tracing titles emerge. We also have information concerning a Titan class product. This has 384 uh, bit memory interface and 12 gigabytes of memory. I have to confess, I am rather curious that we see a Titan card uh, already listed. And you also see the TIs as well, or TIs, whatever you want to call it. They have 352-bit memory interface and 11 gigabytes of uh, GDDR6 memory. The fact they're listing them so early does coincide with some leaks over at Beidou. They are telling us, uh, various users there who claim to have inside information from AIB partners, that yes, we might actually see the release of the ties and even the Titans actually quite close to the RTX 2080. This would be very different from what we've seen, let's say, for the 980s or and then the 980 ties or the 1080s and then the 1080 ties. You get the idea by now. So NVIDIA doing that would be very curious. And it does make me wonder if perhaps they even have a faster card in the uh, distant future, perhaps, and this is pure speculation on my part, but perhaps if they're going to do this, maybe next year at some point, they'll uh, release a 7NM version of these cards, and that's kind of how they're planning to do a refresh, but that's pure speculation on my part, and this might not happen at all. Now, we also have a series of entries on Tech Power Up. 
uh, and this of course would uh, emerge from GPU Z. Now how accurate these are remains to be seen, but it does list several interesting specifications. Let's start things out with the RTX 2080 Ti. This is based on the RT102 core, 4352 CUDA cores, 88 ROPS, 11 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and once again a 352-bit bus. So that does coincide with this supposed AIB leak as well. So that means 616 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, assuming 14 GBPS uh, memory. And finally, this is rounded off with 272 texture mapping units. Meanwhile, the RTX 2080 vanilla has 2,944 CUDA cores on its RT104. So this is actually 128 CUDA cores fewer than the Quadro 5000. Now, the reason I find this interesting is because the same user which is claiming uh, some other information we'll go into in just a second regarding some clock speed information, they claim that there's 3,072 CUDA cores. It's possible NVIDIA have not decided the number of CUDA cores which are in this particular GPU or one of the individuals, either the Beidou user or Tech Power Up, or possibly both just have wrong information. Or of course, one of the leaks is just, you know, fake. So if, we are looking at 128 CUDA cores fewer. That would mean it's one or two SM blocks disabled uh, compared to the uh, RTX 5000 Quadro card. Uh, with Volta, from what I remember, the 64 CUDA cores per SM, but Nvidia in the past have had 128. Uh, CUDA cores per SM. So because we don't know that information yet, it, I'm going to say it's either one or two SMs disabled for uh, the RTX 2080, assuming once again, we do not have the same number of CUDA cores as the Quadro 5000, and we only have um, 2,944. Other than that, it's pretty much what you'd expect, 184 TMUs, 64 ROPs, 8 gigabytes of memory, that's GDDR6 on a 256-bit bus, that's running at 14 GPPS. We know that Samsung have confirmed that, so that's not a surprise. That's 448 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's a considerable advancement over what the uh, 1080 has. Now, there are a number of issues we have with this information. First of all, this information could be inaccurate. After all, Tech Power Up database has been inaccurate before. But it is interesting that this information has now come to light, given most likely we are looking at IABs and NVIDIA themselves and so on and so on, actually running uh, these cards and probably testing them out. So it's very possible that this information has, you know, popped up into the database and has leaked. The biggest issue, though, whether these specifications are accurate or inaccurate is, well, we don't know how this impacts the ray tracing ability that is inside of Turing or the number of tensor cores. So according to Jensen Huang, uh, the RTX uh, 8000 is capable of 125 TFOPs of F32 performance, 250 tops of int 8 and 500 tops of int 4. And that's once again with the Quadro 8000. And the number of uh, giga rays that the Quadro 8000 is able to run is 10, uh, 10 giga rays. So we see a cut from 10 giga rays per second for the Quadro 8000 down to 6 giga rays per second for the Quadro 5000. Now it's almost certain we will have some ray tracing ability, of course, in the RTX 2080 card. But what type of concessions we're going to be seeing with these cores, if any, remains to be seen, and that information has not emerged yet. Furthermore, how tensor cores have been changed or cut has also not been confirmed by NVIDIA. Now, from what NVIDIA have told us at the SIGGRAPH conference, one of the reasons that real-time ray tracing is possible with um, the Turing architecture is because of the tensor cores. So what they're essentially doing is able to render lower resolution ray traced images and then using AI to interpolate and actually improve the image by denoising it and upscaling it. And that allows the graphics card to be able to uh, process images much faster because obviously if you've got a lower resolution image to work with, just let's say if you're rendering something at 720p compared to 1080p or 1080p versus say 4K, you know, obviously the frame rate goes up and the same principle anyway can be seen here. It's possible therefore that NVIDIA might just reduce the number of tensor cores after all they have with the Quadro 5000 series compared to the 8000 series, so they may decide to cut it even further. Or maybe they reduce uh, some other aspect of it, but we're not quite sure yet. Now, 
other leaks which originate on Beidou tell us that these cards will cost 650 US dollars and will be slightly faster than the Titan Vs. We did actually cover some other leaks yesterday concerning benchmarks, although the benchmarks and what cards they are are ambiguous. It simply says a, an NVIDIA graphics device. It could be anything from a TNT1 card all the way to something absolutely insane like uh, a Turing powered Titan card. So the fact is though, I do suspect that the performance of the RTX 2080 is probably going to be roughly on par with the Titan uh, with the Titan 5. I don't necessarily know if it will beat it in all benchmarks, especially in high resolutions. It's possible uh, additional RAM might come into play. But I certainly wouldn't be surprised if it does beat it in some benchmarks. Once again, according to the leaks on Beidou, they are alleging that the RTX 2080 is going to be running at 1920 megahertz for base and color overclocked to 2500 megahertz plus. That is, of course, with some uh, voltages uh, increased and so on and so on, but can boost also way over uh, 2000 megahertz, like 2100 ish megahertz plus. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if those figures are roughly accurate. After all, Nvidia have uh, tweaked uh, Turing in a number of ways. And a different set of leaks, quite early set of leaks, was that NVIDIA have actually been crafting these GPUs to increase the performance even further. After all, that is one of the ways that Pascal improved things over Maxwell. Maxwell, you might recall one of the marketing images that NVIDIA used consistently was crafted for speed and they had changed the GPU to be able to squeeze more performance, higher clock speeds out of the GPU and boost higher compared to Maxwell. So despite the fact that this GPU is still using TSMC 12 and M, it's possible that some tweaks here and there, possibly better power gating and so on and so on, allows the GPU to maintain slightly lower temperatures, at least in comparison to Pascal, and therefore we can see higher uh, performance. Also, you have to recall that Pascal is using uh, 16 NM compared to 12 NM, although the actual silicon itself hasn't been changed that much. There's just a few tweaks here and there, but even so it is a more refined process. The only snag with these rumors is they do conflict with the tech power up rumors. So these rumors allege that we have 3072 CUDA cores as opposed to the tech power up database, which has 2944. And that's why I'm saying the rub is. So you have to decide, well, okay, has the leaker got one piece of information incorrect? Or is all of this information incorrect? Or is the tech power up information incorrect? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Nvidia themselves are still trying to get this. There are other leaks and other murmurs out there that the drivers are not even final yet. Being totally blunt with you, I'm pretty damn sure that's true. I mean, the GPUs are not even launched yet. That's probably another reason that AIBs themselves haven't been running a lot of tests. And another reason that we're not seeing a whole bunch of leaks in terms of the uh, benchmarks of these cards, because, well, it just makes sense. The cards are probably still being tweaked. So the fact of the matter is NVIDIA is still probably working on the drivers, are still probably trying to optimize things, and they probably will be doing so until the very last moment. <laughs> Let's just be honest, NVIDIA, want to squeeze every last drop of performance out of these GPUs before there is a leak. They want to squeeze every last drop of performance before there is an announcement. Because you you know as well as I do that a number can be a magical thing. Let's be really simplistic here and say that you get 100 frames a second at 1080p with a GTX 1080 and 60 frames a second at 1440p with GTX 1080. But obviously that's the average, but let's say occasionally it does dip to like 52 or 50. Well, to a lot of people that's frustrating because they obviously want to get a nice stable 60 FPS. But let's say that Nvidia can promise 45% increase in performance with the RTX 2080. It's probably way more than that, but let's just say 45% just for the sake of this. Okay, you're going to say, that's pretty nice, but what if NVIDIA could instead say 52%? There's that magical thing of saying over 50% faster, and just a few percent can really sell a card. So I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA really are trying to optimize as much as possible here. Finally, a bit of non-news. Game with themselves are starting their own marketing campaign. We've seen NVIDIA do this, and other IOBs are obviously going to be rolling out theirs. Eyes glare at all things. Well, that's what the text is reading on their marketing poster. 
It looks pretty cool, but obviously you can't see much. You can't see any real details on the GPUs themselves. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. There'll be a lot more content on the channel over the next couple of weeks. We've got an awful lot of reviews coming up. That's all I can say. Uh, with all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.